Hello and welcome to another episode of View from the Tilton Road, airing every week on Spotify, Apple Music and on YouTube. I'm Kieran, your host for this episode. Joining us on this episode, I've got Elliot and Cal. And we're also joined by former Blues hero, Martin Granger. Martin, thanks for taking the time to join us. How are you doing? No problem. I'm all good, mate. How are you lot? Yeah, plodding along, I think, as we can. Yeah, so that's all what we can do at the moment, isn't it? we just got to uh, just try and get through it and get on with it. See, isn't it? Obviously, um, fortunately, we're following a, a struggling side at the minute, which would make things uh, makes that a little bit more difficult. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Sorry, mate. Going about in there. No, I was going to say. Obviously, we're going to look back to some more positive times um, during your playing time, really. Yeah. Um, before moving on to the negativity towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> There's always got to be a bit of negativity. No, uh, it wouldn't be blues of wars, would it? <laughs> no, it's just the story tell of it, isn't it? <laughs> but one day it'll uh, it will be there and it'll be sustainable. Just got to keep the faith in you and hopefully get there and do the right things. That's it, isn't it? That's it. Obviously, first of all, I just wanted to quickly touch on was obviously the start of your career, really, your time at Colchester and and Brentford, and obviously what it was like when you first. Um, got into professional football, really. So I was just yeah. touched a bit on that, really. What was it like when you first broke into the side at, at Colchester? Well, I was, I think I was, uh, I made my debut when I was 17. We played talk here at home. And uh, I remember I got absolutely roasted for 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was obviously, the adrenaline got you through, but it was a baptism of fire. And, you know, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I done, what's I do here? Two year YTS. I mean, we was always skin with holes in your training kit and all that sort of stuff. So you sort of, I'm pretty old, pretty old, old school. So you brought up, you had to knock on the dressing room door to go in the first team room. If you didn't, you get beaten up and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, you couldn't do it now. You get put in prison. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, some great memories there, Lower Road. Um, and look where they've come to now with the, uh, the chairman they've got and, the stadium they've built and they've come a long way from when, when I was there. Yeah, and obviously uh, Brentford and the one of your, of your former clubs have, have, have come on leaps and bounds, haven't they, as well in in recent times. Yeah. Uh, what what yeah. was your time like at Brentford, really? You played for a minute time when there was, um, weren't quite as high flying as they were now. Yeah, brilliant. It was a really enjoyable time of career. I didn't want to leave, to be honest. Um, we, um, I think we played Cardiff midweek and David Webb come in and I've, I've been playing well for probably about six, eight months. And um, he come in, he, he was in the next day, funny enough, and he said, uh, I've got to sell you. So I said, well, okay, well, where am I going? He went, Birmingham City have come in for you. So being a London lad, didn't really know too much of the history and all that sort of stuff. Um, when I spoke to my dad, I said, dad, look, I said, um, Birmingham City have come in for me. Um, I've been told I've got to go. They've got to, they're, they're struggling for money. He went, you've got to go. He said, they're like, he said, like, they're sleeping giant. That's what he said to me at the time. So when I turned up and playing in front of from 2000, I mean, Brentford was three and a half thousand. I think at the time they weren't doing particularly well when I turned up to 10,000. Then playing in front of 30,000, you're just thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's completely different. But it, it was, uh, yeah, Brentford was a really good time. I think we had one playoff loss. We got to, we lost, obviously lost out to Blues. That season, they went up on goal difference, I believe. Oh, we lost, we missed out on a point. He beat us 2-1 at St Andrews, I think. Kevin Francis got the second one. Because uh, I remember he's, when he shot, his foot was halfway around my head. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, we, yeah, I think we missed out on a point. And then um, the following year, we missed out on the playoffs. We lost on penalties at home to Huddersfield, near Warnock. Yeah, but that was good. And then I went to Birmingham and didn't have a particularly great start. Um, made a few rash tackles, got sent off, give a penalty away, scored an own goal. I remember at Swindon away, I got up to warm up, and one of our fans said, Sit the effing down, what are you doing? <laughs> so <laughs> that sort of drove me on from then, really. And I always remember that. And I was just thought, No, I'll prove you wrong. And I did, hopefully. Did you find that the grief from the fans kind of, like you say, kind of spurred you on a bit when during your playing yeah. days? To be honest, I like I liked it. You know, you, you I didn't really have a I think I only I only had a real negative 
reaction. I think it was at Fulham away. I had some fellow all game next to his 10 year old son called me everything like about my children, my wife and all that. After the game, I walked over to him and like and told him where to go. I got threatened to get cautioned for it. And he'd done all that in front of his, uh, for his son. But to be honest, I didn't mind it. It's part of it. It's part of the fun. You have a bit of banter back. Um, and it just drives me on just to say, right, I'll show you. You know, I took it as a positive. If they're having a go at me, uh, they it shows that they care. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, hopefully that wasn't my dad because I, I was going down there when I was about 10 with my dad watching the play. So, <laughs> what was that, Fulham? <laughs> Might have been. Oh, yeah. I, used to, I mean, living down south, my, my dad's a Brummie, but we used to go to all the games down this way, Fulham or, or not Millwall, but Fulham, um, Reading, QPR, we used to go to all yeah. those games. It was sitting right on the half. I can remember it now, sitting right on the halfway line. <laughs> and it was, it, was the, it, it was a tunnel side and I, I just I just lost it in the end. That was the only time ever. And I, I got police come in and said, oh, can you come with us? And all. I'm thinking, you know what I mean? I said, he just called me everything. Like, wanted to do my missus, my children, everything. And, and I'm saying one thing and I'm going to get done for it. But they, well, they let me off with a telling off, basically. I think the only time my dad got in trouble was at Crystal Palace, so I think you're all right on that front. But, <laughs> um, moving moving on, obviously, Baz has brought you to Birmingham, and I think what we all want to know is what how would you describe him and what was he like as a coach to play for? Uh, he was probably one of the, I'd say up there, the best 10 weeks of my career um, for entertainment, passion, desire, want to win, likability. I remember we, I think my debut was Grimsby away. We actually lost 2-1, I believe. So I'm, I'm a bit nervous, you know, coming to play for Birmingham. First game, he come on the pitch, put his arm around me, he said, Grange, I said, yeah, he said, can you play right back? <laughs> so I said, well, yeah, if you want. So I played right back that day. And then before, <laughs> I think the next game we played at home was against Luton. And um, I'm sitting in there and I think, right, home debut, I'm playing left back today. And his ball's banging off the wall. And his two sons are kicking around, smashing and sliding tackling in, in in the dressing room before we're going out. He went, Adam! I said, no, nah, F off. Get out. But character, unbelievable. He was really, really, really good to have around the place. And um, I thanked it. Well, I thank him for taking me there. You know, really, 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 really great guy. And I tell you what, what a footballer. He can play. Really, people wouldn't think it because you see little, little Barry, Barry Fry, little legs, bit of a, Bit of a fat belly, but he had some ability. Unbelievable. They really, really good. Sort of manager I like, really. Him. Yep. Sort of manager I like is someone who would grab you around the throat, throat be in your face, yeah. and then buy you a drink afterwards. All forgotten, think, you know? I think we've all seen, well, I've seen clips of him, you know, when he was a manager for Peterborough. I think we've all seen the clips on Twitter and stuff yeah. like that. Where he's, he's really laying into into some of the players. Was he like that? Was he was he like that in the in the blues changing room as well? Yeah, yeah, be like that. It'd be, I mean you'd go in, you'd be in your face and do this, do that, trying to get the right reaction out of you. And then you'd run you'd be running your bath, he'd get in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then have a wash, but then he'll go and buy all the lads a drink in the bar. You know, it he, he, he was one of them. He wouldn't take it any further than dress. As soon as you went out the dressing room, that was done. And maybe we'd we'd, we'd have a little talk about it on a Monday. And then you just move on to the next game because you, if you dwell on it, you, it's gone, isn't it? So you might as well just move on. And then he used to get the right reaction out of people. And I was really sad to see him go, really, at the time. Yeah. I think you do see it with him now, don't you, as well, when he does his interviews on, on Sky and stuff, obviously, in a, in a different light. You, you still see that that character and that personality that, that he brings oh, to yeah. the table. Oh, he's brilliant. He's... <laughs> I mean, he didn't do too much of the, I'd say, the coaching side of it. I think he was more of a, he could go and find a player. He could wheel and deal. He could motivate you into playing. It'd make you want to play for him. And that's half the battle. It's, I mean, that's what you're probably seeing at the moment with our situation. At the minute, it doesn't seem like the manager and the players are united, if so to speak. Where Baz had, Baz had that in an abundance with all the clubs and people that I spoke to before, before I went there and said, like, he's a great, great manager. If he goes on, he said, potentially he takes players with him and all that sort of stuff. He likes the same sort of, same sort of people around him, which I found, which was good for me. You know? 
Yeah, well, I just want to touch on that cup final, obviously. The two Premier League teams you beat on the route was Spurs and Newcastle. Just sort of talk to us about what that was like when you got to that cup final. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, beating those teams on the way, he, was, uh, he wasn't meant to win, you know. And it was you just go out and basically you're playing free. And, um, I mean, to beat Newcastle with, with the likes of Shearer and, and those sort of players in the team was was really, really good. But it, the, the sad thing is, is you get up to win, though, I think it was 2-1 and 3-1, wasn't it? We won 3-1 at Spurs. Yeah. And, and people say, oh, you've gone and beat Premiership sides. But that's really how you should be playing every week. You know, it's just, it, it's amazing how teams go and beat Premiership sides and then go and lose to Rotherham on the Tuesday. Mm. You know, it's just, you should be beating them every week. But, that's, but get, get, to get to a major cup final was, uh, was unreal. I'm real. Did you? And the, so I was going to say because I remember that I remember the Spurs game it was Halloween, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Mark yeah. Virtual scored, didn't he? Uh, Daly scored. Yeah. The other one. Did you get an assist? Um, Did you get an assist for Virtual? Yeah, I put, I put the one in for Virtual. Yeah, because that's why right. <laughs> I remember my dad. He was screaming at me to run to all goal because I went through the middle, <laughs> and I thought oh, there's no way I'm getting there, so I went out to the left. And then I, I see him going and, and crossed it. I mean, that was Bertie was brilliant at that. He runs into the box and yeah. little fox in the box. When he, I thought he was uh, an outstanding striker. Mark. He was great. Digging out a bowler strike as well was phenomenal, wasn't it? That night, it was yeah, a thirty just, yarder. Yeah, yeah. I think coming from the right hand side, then he sort of went mm. over, but through the keeper that power, and you didn't really see Dealey crack the ball from distance much. But that night, it just rocketed in. Yeah, I can't Stumped remember who got the third one. Yeah, I think the third one. I think Adebola got two, didn't he? I think he got two. Did he? he yeah. Pretty sure did he did. Bertie, did Bertie get the first one? I can't remember. Years ago. <laughs> Mine's going a bit. <laughs> it, it was a while ago. Yeah, but then to play in the final was, uh, I mean, the way we lost, which we should have had another penalty, but then to be one of the ones that missed the penalty in the final is... Soul destroying, really, but you soon forget it and get on it. You always have another game, and then we get promoted. So it sort of takes takes that off of it, really. Yeah, I mean, I that was one of the things I was going to mention. She was obviously that that final against Liverpool, and obviously he, he took the yeah. the first penalty for us. Is that something that that played on your mind for for weeks after that, or was it something that you just said, right, put that to bed? It is what it is, or no? It's it's just one of them. I mean, if you if if you watch it back nowadays, he, he was off his line two yards, and then I mean he, he'd done the right thing. He's come off his line and gone and saved it, but you probably would have took it again, you know. Um, but it's one of them. You pick a spot if he saves it. It's, we blame AJ anyway because he took the last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone remembers AJ, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean for such a young lad as well. Um, but I must admit it broke my heart when I'd done it ah, just thinking because I had my kids in, up in the stand and all your family and all that and you're just thinking oh, why me but that's to happen to somebody doesn't it unfortunately mm. it was me but you just got to take it on a chin and get on with it you know it's like you say just drink a lot of <laughs> it's like when you look back as well you, you think we, we should have had a, another penalty in and oh, you yeah. thought um, but... it'd be, that'd have been that ruler Ridiculous. It was, I, I purely think the Premiership referee, Championship side, that's why we didn't get it. 100%. If that was two Premiership sides, Premiership, they were, he would have given a penalty. I still mm. believe that today. It was, it was a nailed on penalty. You know, um, whether we'd have scored it or not, but that's another thing, isn't it? But we would have had the chance to win it in the 90th minute or whatever minute it was. I can't remember. It was, yeah, it was, was it the first the first half of extra time, wasn't it, that it happened? And um, I think even right. leading up to that, Brian Hughes had a chip, didn't he, from like 30, 40 yards yeah. and then he went in and we were but, just dominating. How about the, um, Robbie Fowler's goal, though? He wasn't even looking. That was him all over, wasn't it? Unbelievable finish. Yeah. That's what you're playing up against, you know? Uh, but I, thought, I still think over the, 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 the 90 minutes of extra time, we deserved it in normal play, mm. but unfortunately for us, we didn't get it. It's, it's like an achievement. 
So I mentioned the cup run we played Newcastle, and, and that's that result really stands out because that that Newcastle side was was brilliant, weren't they? And to to, yeah. to beat them at St Andrews, a last minute winner as well, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, but it's like when when you you take that and you take the the Ipswich game, the noise is just. I think that's that's what sort of because I made a comment on Twitter the other day about you shouldn't be worrying about fans getting on it, but then two nights, I, I mean, I, I was running, my feet weren't in touching the floor, it was that loud. You know, it's just, mm. it just gives you that, that drive. But you shouldn't need it really, you should be, uh, should be doing your job, shouldn't you? Touching on that Ipswich night, would, that, would you say that's one of the best atmospheres you've played in? Oh, it was, it was noisier than the Millennium, both of both cup games. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. It's still... Even there was a little clip on Twitter the other day and I was watching it. It still makes me ears on the back of my neck stand up. It's just ridiculous, ridiculously noisy. Um, but it was, yeah, unreal. You just even the lads when you speak about them. We, if we, we're, when we've met up, um, you, you talk about it and it's just one of those memorable. It never leave you. Yeah. I think the place was rocking that night. That's probably why oh. I had to close after stadium. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Lately>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like. Um, it was like radio waves in your ears. It was like whistling. It was just, you just can't describe, unless you was there playing, you, just, you can't, people would just think, oh yeah, but you're thinking, you, you, you just say like you have Spurs Arsenal or Villa Birmingham when we had um, uh, Villa at our place and when, when the Enkelman, because that was the only, only one I played in. That was 50 times louder than that. Ridiculous. And it was 10 times louder than Millennium and that was noisy. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, about, I think I was five at that time, so I was I was going to say, was you about but, four? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't even know if Cal was born. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair. But I mean, obviously, my my similar experience as, as a fan was the West Ham game in, in 2000 and 2011. And I remember too, um, after after extra time, it, the, the whole ground was... was Buzzing for you know all the way down the stairs, down the streets. You could you, you, yeah, know, you could yeah. still still hear it for ages afterwards. So you can't imagine what it'd been like to to play in really. Oh yeah, I mean it, it's just unreal. It's just it's just what you that's what you train for. It's what you want to be involved in. You know games like that. Um, it's like those sort of atmospheres. I know that was on a different level, but like the performances and the atmospheres, they should always be there, shouldn't they? From both sides of us, yeah, you know. But then atmospheres drop on our poor you're performing, and it, it people just get a bit left off of what they're watching, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. one one mistake or one decision can, can really swing you. Well, which it? is which is understandable, really. You you pay you pay to be entertained or pay to see effort and endeavour and passion and desire and. A will to win and I want to win, you know. Got yourself a goal in the Ipswich game, didn't you? If, you're, if I remember rightly, as well, was it Bill? From an inch, yeah. <laughs> About yeah. Half a yard out. I, uh, <laughs> I always tell Jeff that I was faster than him, so I had sprinted him for the, to get in front of him. And uh, yeah, I think that that put us that put us level on over the two games, wasn't it? Did we, well, I can't remember. Did we lose? Was it nil nil at their place or one one nil we lost? Yeah, yeah. So that put us on uh, level terms, and I think then who got the second one because they equalised to uh, in the second half, didn't they? Yeah, also had the second one. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because then he chased me after I scored and flipped me over, and he nearly snapped the cruciate. I remember I could sit on the (laughs) telly, my leg goes wallop. (laughs) I still tell him to this day that I outpaced him for it. Yeah, so that, that was really good. Really, really good. Um, obviously, going back a, pre- a few years previous, obviously we had mm-hmm. a few few near misses in the playoffs. So I remember a game where we lost 4-0 to Barnsley at home. Um, oh, that was horrendous. That, that, was, that was the most disappointing out of the lot, that one. You, uh, you, yeah. You're out of it, aren't you? Absolutely. You're out of it from that game. I mean... That was a long old drive back with my dad. I don't think he spoke the words. And um, I think we left at 3-0, unfortunately. And it was just devastating. I, and I think I hyper-extended my knee in that one. I, I come off. I didn't play in the second game. Um, but 
we actually fancied that was the easiest tie. Yeah. And maybe through the squad, it might have been a, I don't know, mental complacency maybe. But we really fancied that we were going through from that one. And that was, out of that and the Watford one, that was the most disappointing one. Because the Watford one, the goalkeeper had an unbelievable night, didn't he, Chamberlain? He did. He and... saved everything. I don't, even going back to that Barnsley game, I mean, they had useful players, you know, like Bruce Dyer up front and Shipley, and I think they sort of just, they just took us by surprise, didn't they, like you say. And just done a number, didn't they? expecting it. Yeah. No. Nah. I, I think maybe squad mentality may have, might have had a different mindset of looking further beyond that, maybe, which you shouldn't do. But, yeah, yeah that was, it was just after that training all week in Everyone's saying, yeah, we can get it back. But realistically, you ain't going to go to Barnsley and score five goals, are you? No, I mean, it was no. ironic. We went there, didn't we? We won anyway. But I think yeah. the other big this, the other big disappointing game was the, the one at Preston in the playoffs, playoff semi-final away at Preston. We went out on penalties. penalties. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they, they'd done uh, the toss. They, they mucked the toss up and we should have gone towards our fans. Mm-hmm. And it, for some reason, it went to theirs. They, the, oh, the police stepped in, said you got to do it at that end, which was ridiculous. I think we had won the toss, yeah. and that's why we were we weren't going to take the penalties, yeah. um, which was stupid, really. Why? Let's just give them the slight advantage, maybe, of putting a goalkeeper off or or the, or the taker. But yeah, so we, we had, I think what was my fourth attempt we got there in the end? Was it? Yeah, like Preston, Barnsley. Yeah, fourth attempt. What fourth time yeah, that it was? Yeah. yeah. Just talk to us about that most hated man comment on Kevin Muscat. Just talk to us about that. <laughs> well, I mean, someone asked me, asked me because I mean, the games that we played in, it always seems to revolve around him, um, and even his mate Stan Azaridis, he uh, he done him one day. He put six studs all down his chest. And Stan used to say, oh, he's a really nice bloke and all that. But I, I, I used to find the way that he used to try and... Don't get me wrong, I used to fly into tackles. But I didn't go and try and break your leg or do you? And I believe that he would go in, leave it 70-30 in his favour and try and do you. And I just... I mean, he, he ruined... He ended the guy at Norwich's career, didn't he? Uh, is it Matty, was it Matty Holmes? Was it him? Um, finished his career a leg breaking tackle but he, he was just one of them I mean Skip got sent off twice for chinning him twice in the game I mean I used to play rubbish against Wolverhampton uh, against Wolves because I was thinking right I'm going to I'm going to smash you all I was thinking I was going to smash him just I just wanted to smash him and it used to put uh, it put me off my game I don't think I ever had a good game against him so just so focused on just trying to crash into him which, which is stupid really because he he, he just, he's one of them players. He's the only player that my career is just wind me up. Uh, yeah, he weren't, he weren't on the Christmas card, let's put it that way. <laughs> is it true you um, you followed him down the uh, into the, the changing rooms in uh, Molyneux after one of the games or during one of the yeah, games? Try to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of them. He, but the thing is, maybe he'd done it on purpose and he was good at what he was doing. But I just didn't like the way he went about and how he used to do people. Um, that's for me. That's that's a coward, but that's my opinion. I don't think I'm the only person who have that opinion. Should I skip? Skips it in twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Did he play for Millwall at, at one time? Yeah, I mean, uh, Millwall. Yeah. It, yeah, it was just Millwall and Wolves, wasn't it? I think Pretty it was. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He played for Millwall. That's probably where he learned how to be a. One of them. That's, that's a match made, match made in heaven, them two, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. But he's still like you see him when he. I don't know if he's still managing in Australia, but when you see him on the side, he's still the same person. You know, I mean, he's just he's not particularly well liked. I don't think that's my well. That's how I perceive him anyway. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen any positive words about him really, apart from what like you say. This Stan Lazarus used to say he was an Oscar. <laughs> well, yeah, he yeah, said he's a really nice guy. I said, yeah, you got you got a tram line of six studs all the way from the top of your chest to your stomach. Really nice. He's supposed to be your mate. But, yeah, coward, mate. 
I mean, obviously, just reflecting back on the, the playoff times again, what, what was the final against Norwich like to, to be involved in as a, as a player? And obviously, how did you feel when, when Cart stepped up for that, that penalty? Do you know what? Cart's just had that about him. Calmness. If you probably... Probably in that position, if you had it again, another one, probably him, Hughes or Percy, you'd put to take that penalty. But Cart's just... He was a young lad, had no fear. You just fancied him. But the game itself, I, I just felt... You just feel on edge the whole game because it's so big. The rewards to it is so big. It's, it's like if you've never been in the Premier League and there's a chance to get there and you've, you've played in every division from Visa Homes all the way up and you're just thinking, we can't blow this. Even if we just play one game, we've got to get there. And uh, you just feel every time you got the ball because their goal, I was looking where I was going to take a touch and pass it and it went under my foot. And then... I can't remember who got, who got it wide. He, he saw, I went and plucked the cross, he crossed it, and you and Robert scored, and you're just thinking, not again. You know, um, although it had another minute or two before it went in the box, you're just thinking, oh, it's gone under my foot. It's partly my fault, you know, and you're just thinking, shit, now, we, now, we've, got to, now we've got to try and do something to get back into it. But it was just, it's a game that you play on the edge for 90 minutes, and, it, and or with the extra time, because the rewards of it is just massive. Oh, it's not the financial walls, it's, 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 yeah. it's getting into the premiership. How you grow, isn't it? Yeah. I, remember, I remember the devastation on your face as well. I was at that game and I was probably right in line with you when that ball went under your foot and then the cross went in and you and Roberts headed it into the corner. I just remember uh, you falling to your knees and I think... Uh, we it's, just, it's just, you know, you're just thinking... Oh, to be honest, I was just looking. I was going that way and it just, oh. as I'm looking up... It, you're expecting the ball to bounce and it, I've obviously put my foot up too high and it's gone underneath and I'm just thinking still got a chance to stop the cross but to be fair he put a great cross in and Euron Roberts does what Euron Roberts yeah. does doesn't he a good header by him um, we yeah, can blame Jono because Jono lost, lost his marker <laughs> 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 no but it was, uh, it was one of them we got back in the end and thank God we uh, we done it in the end um, but saying that also, he nearly Green nearly saved all his chance Unbelievable. He made a few good saves again that day, and you're thinking, no, I'm not another keeper that's gonna that's gonna deny us. But um lucky enough we got carts, haven't we? Stepped up and done the business. Did you did you ever feel that it was just never gonna happen for you, really? You know, three three attempts at the semi finals and then obviously they're going into the Norwich game. Or during yeah, the Norwich I mean, game. I mean I had a failed attempt at uh we lost some penalties at Brentford. Uh, we lost on penalties at Preston. We got walloped. Was it was Barnsley the, before Watford? Yeah. Well, we got walloped by Barnsley at home. Lost on penalties to Watford because of the goalkeeper. And I'm thinking, that's five goals I've had. Is it me? <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're just thinking, come on, just just one's got to go your way. I, can't, I couldn't. I couldn't have had five attempts and not got there. But lucky we did. We did the one. But it's a great way to go through. Um, it's a great chance. It's like if you finish sixth, six, you can still get into the Premier League, which is, uh, I think, it's a great format. Edgy games because there's so much at stake. But really, really good to be involved in. It does seem to bring that, that something extra, doesn't it? You know, a bit of extra excitement yeah, at the it, end of the season. Well, it's the expectations of supporters have never seen Premiership teams come to their ground and going to Premiership games to watch games and playing against better players, um, testing yourself personally as a player to see if you're good enough. You know, that's 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 the thing. Um, but then you find, when you watch it on TV, I used to say to my dad, I said, oh, I could play in that. You get so much time. Arsenal away first game of the season, I hated it. Got absolutely run, run ragged. I thought I was fit. I was one of the, I reckon I was in the top three or four in the, in the club of fitness, like can run. Not particularly quick, but can run. I was dead after first, after 70 minutes, gone. Leg had gone. Brucey came in at the end and said, Dad, do you enjoy that? I said, I hated it. Got absolutely closed down. They keep the ball. All you do is chase it for 90 minutes. I think Percy saved about 10 off the line. Could have lost 10-0 that day if it weren't for him. I mean, so that's what you want. You want to get there. 
is that you mentioned playing against the better players. Who would you say was the best player that you played against? And obviously, flip side of that, who was the best player you played alongside as well? Oh, the best player I've played against. I wouldn't say he was the best player, but he gave me the most problems because I didn't know whether to go stay with my back four, go tight. Um, Middlesbrough, who was it? Mendia? Was it Gasco Mendia? Mm. He sort of just played in between. And he he didn't go back. He didn't really go forward. So did I go and run him that way? Did I go and close him down? Did I stay where I was? And he just found he just found pockets all the time. And he was just turning and picking passes and just thinking, I don't know whether to stick or twist, you know. <laughs> and um, so he, he was he was difficult, but the best player I played with. Um there's been a few. Um I wouldn't really want to individually dump Christoph Dugary was gonna say you played with some real Yeah, was, was yeah I mean Stan Lazaridis is probably the best person I've seen who could cross a ball on the run when he's getting closed down. He's ridiculous. Hughesy does used to if, if he produced more what he did in games, don't get me wrong, he was fantastic in games. What he used to do in training, he'd be like, he'd be, why are you here? You know, diff, different class. I mean, Percy, great player. Jono, great player. Kenny Cummins and Kenner. You know, they're all, like Martin O'Connor's, they're, they're all good in their own in their own in their own rights. Mikel Fussell, ridiculous. And one of the ones which I wish we'd never let him go was Andy Johnson. He was he was a superstar in the making, but we swapped him for Clinton Morrison. Why why they done that, I didn't know. No idea. Don't get me wrong, Clinton Morrison scored goals, but he wasn't an Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson had the potential and he, he went on to bigger, better things, didn't he? Right, I, I wouldn't say stories. better, but he went on for bigger things. I remember stories at the time, apparently Bruce, he said, or the, or the, the board or whatever it might have been that made the final decision to so said that Johnson wasn't cut out for the Premier League was one of the things I see. Yeah. Whether well, that's true or not. But... Well, I, I mean, I remember Mark Bowen, he was assistant at the time and he said, oh, what Clinton produces in training and in games and that. And I just think in, I can see the bigger picture for AJ as someone you had to keep, really. But if we'd have kept him, would, it, would AJ have gone and had the career he's had? You don't know. Um, but he proved them wrong. I think we, I think they swapped them and give, did we give Palace four million as well? That's a terrible deal, isn't it? Yeah. I think, anyway, um, for the potential that I, excuse me, that AJ had. And he showed it in the end. If I, remember goals, rightly, if I remember rightly, when first time he came back to St Andrews with Palace, did he not score twice and we lost 2-0? Do you know what? I remember, I think I had a season ticket. I was sat in the, uh, in the family stand. I just remember it. Bit. Pretty sure he'd be back both goals. And Probably you just, you just oh, think, I've, I've, gone just I've, I've gone then, haven't I? I'd already gone. I was already selling my shit and gone. <laughs> I was on the knackers yard then. Yeah, but he, uh, he scored the goals everywhere he went, didn't he? I mean, how many, I don't know how many premiership goals he got, but he got a few. And you don't play, don't, you don't play for Everton in England if you're not a good player. Yeah. I think the, the problem with AJ when he was younger, he, he, his finishing used to let him down because he used to, he didn't have that finish where he'd go in, he'll just slot it past the keeper or he used to go through and smash quite a bit. But that's just through coaching, coaching, teaching. You know, I think if if Trevor Francis was still at the club, I don't think they would have, that deal would have gone through. But I think it was only that deal went through because they were there before. But um, a strange one. Well, it's football, though, isn't it? Football is strange. Yeah, I do. I think I agree with you with that because I I do recall a few games with AJ. He's been you know he's been clean for on goal, and he he sometimes like say he could just be coached to have a little bit more um, you yeah. know to be a little bit more clinical rather than rush a shot, which he used to do and. Yeah, like, I think he, I think that's just your that's just age and experience, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, you, you get someone older than him and do a bit of do a bit of that every day of going through with a keeper, either take him on one on one or slot it, dink him. But then you see him go through his career. He had all he scored all sorts of goals. Yeah. He wasn't just quick. He scored headers. His old up play was better because he got good coaching. Yeah. You know, that's that's when I think. Because someone said to me on Twitter the other day, have you got your coaching badges and all that? 
coaching badges. I'm not being funny. If you played football, surely a striker can come and get him, teach him how to receive a ball and go and finish. You don't need a piece of paper for that. Yeah. You know, that's just putting time on the training ground and working with him, giving him confidence, being a good manager, man managing, you know, and get the best out of him. Because he, he would just score, with his pace alone, he would, he would score bundles of goals. And he was brave, you know? Yeah, he was. I mean, you mentioned Mikel Forsell as, as one of the players you, you played alongside. I heard you telling the story. Um, I think he was on chain to Dale Moon and, and Colin Tatum for the Blues um, yeah. your podcast. And you was telling the story about you and Mikel were both coming back from an injury, I believe. And you and he was uh, one time. <laughs> I've never seen a ball move, seen someone's feet so quick. I said to I said to Mikel, I said, you carry on, mate. I'm going to have to go and have more surgery. <laughs> <laughs> his feet were unbelievable and they, like we, we do a bit when I think well, we was like obviously the ball would get rolled into him and he'll come and attack me over only like a 15 yard area where I said look just move me left and right so I can twist and turn on my knee he was flip flapping he'd done an Aussie Ardealers over my head and I'm thinking this carries on I'm either going to smash you or I'm going to do myself an injury. <laughs> I said, Miguel, I said, come on. I said, just leave it alone. He's just like, you know, he had two ping pong bats. He's like, hey, dun, 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 dun. I was like cheers. I said, no. Nah. I said, mate, leave off. I'll go and get one of the kids to do it. <laughs> but yeah, he was, he was a top, top lad as well, Miguel. Really, really top lad. Strong. He could finish. He could have taught AJ a thing or two. Just really, to show him really with the injuries, injuries, wasn't it? Just a shame. Yeah, he? yeah, he's another one. He had a, I think it was both knees he had problems with, but, but really, really good player. Scored goals. He could have been anything, couldn't he? Really, when you look at it, without them injuries, he could have, you know, he, he's, you know, he didn't yeah. even see a, a, a ceiling as such for him, really. Yeah, it's just, it's just unfortunate. It happens, doesn't it? Well, I mean, I can tell you that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, looking back at your time, yeah, what would you say are the standout moments for you? Standout moments, obviously, getting promoted was huge. Um, playing as many games as I did because Trevor signed about fifteen left backs. Obviously, didn't like what you see when he first started. I think he signed Simon Charlton, Tom Williams. Uh, one from Oxford, God rest his soul, Gary Ablett. Um, who was the other one? There was another one. Oh, David Burrows. I was just thinking, my, my, is my time numbered here? Um, but making my debut was one, even though we lost. I think we lost 2 1 at Grimsby. Not a debut to remember, but making my debut. And, uh, and I was proud of the fact that I, um, I sort of held my own in the end sort of kept my shirt, made him pick me, made the managers pick me through the way I trained and attitude and 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 the will to win, really. Sometimes a bit over the mark, but that's, that's life, isn't it? I think you got, you, got, you got player of the year one of the years, didn't you? And, and you was in um, the PFA team of the year as well. Yeah, 2000 and... I think that was 2001, 2002, yeah. I, got, I think I scooped about eight awards... And that to be voted in the team a year by the rest of the league, which was, was really, really nice. Um, but see, those sort of things should be a standard, you know what I mean? You should be playing like that every week. So right, some weeks you're not gonna you're not gonna perform to your highest levels, but you still gotta put the effort and endeavour in. Um, and that's that should be a given. You know, you only train probably five hours a week. You need to put a shift in on the weekend. That's, that's game time. Well, I mean, I, personally, I think that's one of the, the... You look at the team that obviously everyone expects Blues to be or wants Blues to be up there every season. You look at the team that got promoted with yourself and, and Percy and, and the rest of them and compared to what the team has now and you think that one thing that's obviously missing is that 100% commitment and that, that passion and will to play for the shirt sometimes. I just think you've got... Uh, don't get me wrong I've not seen bundles of the games I've seen lots of clips and 
I look at what they're like without the ball. And they're probably the worst team I've seen of football this year without the football. Disjointed all over the place. You can't see any leaders. I mean, the goal the other day, I, I think I sent someone a screenshot and circled seven players against two that are outside the box and one in, in the box who scored the header and Harley Dean dropped off. And I'm just thinking... We have spoke about that on the podcast, surprisingly. <laughs> do, you th- do you think Darren Purse would have dropped off there or do you think Darren Purse would have gone and headed him in, into the stand? You know, it's just... That, that is just basic football. And that needs... What I see just needs hours and hours on a training ground of regimented going back to basic football because the basics are just no good at. You can see that from afar. It's just it's just no leaders there, no passion. I bet none of them grab each other around the throat and address them or have it out. You know, it's, it just don't happen no more. It's just it's just too easy to to be acceptable, and it ain't acceptable, and it ain't no, acceptable uh, for you lot. No, it's not. It's it is frustrating. And like you say, I, I notice a lot of that as well off the ball. You know, the good sides they they're great with the ball, but they're even better without the ball without it. yeah and um, we're definitely not doing it without the ball at all and even with the ball I mean you know last season you know a lot of sides figure this out give them the ball they can't break us down or we'll just counter attack yeah. on them and it just happened time and time again and, but I think uh, one question some, uh, someone tweeted me the, uh, the other day and they said oh could you ask ask Grange this question mm-hmm. um, out of that squad at the moment who would you give the uh, captain's armband to Tough question, I know. I mean, I know he hasn't been playing a lot recently, but the big fella up front, Jukovic. I can't say. I mean, the one that only really you looks like you has a has a dig about. He's gone to Millwall, Cliftonberger. What's it now? Cliftonberg, whatever his name is. You know, I mean, yeah. Harley Dean for a centre half and a captain. When you watch the games, you don't hear him organising, pulling people in left, right and centre. I mean, we had, I played with Jono, uh, Rowick, Cunningham, Kenner, even, well, Bruce, he was probably the best at it. Um, they would talk you into positions. They would pull people back. I mean, one of the goals, I think it was Reading. Um, did you lose to Reading 2-1, 3-1? Was it something like that? Was it Reading? Uh, what, this season? Yeah. It was probably three or four weeks ago and the shape of the back four, I mean, the full back would, had gone to close someone down. Right side centre half come off. Uh, left side centre half come off. Right side centre half's gone forward and the right back's nowhere to be seen. And you're just thinking, surely you must be doing stuff on a training ground. Yeah. If not, if they are, if, if not, or they're just not, or they're just doing what they want. You know, I mean, it just looks too easy just not to be bothered and that's the frustrating because I still get people because don't get me people know what I think of Birmingham I was there for 10 years I lived there I still got oh your team's still losing I'm thinking do you know what you need to I won't swear but leave off you know it still hurts now when you're watching it and just thinking what I was a part of for that 8 or 9 years really really we had success I thought was quite successful we built all the way to get there um although they've come down cut but it's just a club that just needs sustainability it just needs to stay there because the support is massive and i I still get stick for it now and I was just thinking oh stick my boots on and give you 12 stuff <laughs> it's just frustrating it's frustrating it must be for you I mean I don't play no more and I still, I still get frustrated now. I look at the telly and I'm just thinking, because when Birmingham were at home, I think, right, so I stick one on the coupon. You can't. <laughs> I mean, it's one of them as well. You're just thinking, that's an away win. At the moment, you know, that's, and that's just the mentality right the way through the club from top to bottom is just just wrong. It's, 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 this is something I was going to ask. How many players has he brought in, Karanka? 14. 14. How many? 14. 14. Who... Well, this is what I want to know. Who is sanctioning this and who's helping him make the decisions? Who's going to pick these players? Who's the relation between the guy that's running it and the club? They've got some agent that's just 
picking up money. Have they got a director of football? This is where I said the other day, someone like Trevor Francis should be in their director of football. You know, someone a go between who actually knows the club, understands the club, knows a player. It's just the recruitment side of it is just been woeful. I was about to say that because uh, you know Dom came out and had an interview the other day, which was in some parts farcical with what he said, and and he said that even with regards to like the, the recruitment process, it, it's outsourced. It's not even a department. You know, they they have a scout in Spain and a scout in France. I mean, this is you know it's ridiculous. Why don't they have a scout that's affiliated with the football club and say, right, mm-hmm. go to Spain, go and watch them three games in that week. Mm-hmm. Go to Germany, go and watch that player over there, and have him do it. Uh, so yeah. I guarantee you that there's, there's, there's probably agents. Who's advising the geezer? I don't know. You need because whoever he's taking advice off, he's making making the club look ridiculous. It's just yeah, Rob, Robbo said it, didn't he? Robbo said it a few weeks ago. We spoke to him, and he said there's 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 no football people running that club no. anymore. No, it needs. I know. I mean, I'm not a fan of director of football. I mean, if you if you have that sort of uh, tag, you, you need not to get involved with the team. But if you've got someone like on board, just say Martin O'Connor, Paul Devlin, and say, right, I need I need this right back going and looked at. We we'll fly over to Germany, go and do a report, go and watch him. Like he's got a game Saturday, Tuesday, go and watch him. Why do you need someone in Spain? Why do you need someone over there? Someone over there. It's just. It, <laughs> Like, like you say, it's, it's just been run. It's got the wrong people in the wrong places, basically. I mean, to bring 14 people in, 14 players, and I mean, yeah, I know he's brought what he knows in from Middlesbrough, but why have they been let go from Middlesbrough, the two boys? He, uh, this uh, this is not, no disrespect to Luton, Wickham Wanderers. I mean, this is not them. This is Birmingham City. This club's massive. We should be going to get, say, if you want a striker, go and get Parrot from Tottenham who's been banging in goals go and get him go and get a couple of people from Man United then go and get your 28 year olds experienced players that don't just want to come to the club and pick up money but want to come and play not yeah. I mean don't get me wrong I'm not knocking foreign players of this whatsoever but one of the games I see the other day he played four four or three one four two whatever it was and four of the five midfielders were like foreign players but this division needs a spine of grit determination and I think okay if it's going well on a nice summer's day at home you're winning league by 15 points playing but for me you need a spine right the way through the middle goalkeeper two centre two centre midfielders uh, especially your back four a striker and someone else and that'd be flare down the outside but I just don't think if you've got that in your game Somewhere on a Tuesday night in the cold, that ain't going to work for me personally. Yeah, I agree because I, I think Kieran will back me up and Carl will back me up with it. I think, you know, getting rid of Morrison, uh, you know, not offering him a contract, you know, he he was that, that leader at the back that we had. He, he might have lacked a little bit in ability, you know, his, his turn of pace and whatnot, you know, but he, he was the organiser. He organised yeah. He organised us we, on the back. We can be good in different ways, can't you? You can be you yeah. verbally, you can pull people about and put yourself in a position where you're going to benefit the side. You know, we, Robbo coming towards the end of his career, he done that verbally. He would put people, he'd still go crashing into tackles because that's the way he played and put his head in. But he'll, he'll put himself in a position and get other people in positions where it will benefit the side. And there ain't no one like, there ain't nobody in that team that does that. I mean, even the goalkeeper, he, he seems quiet, you know. I mean, I know he's made a few good saves. He's had a, he's had a couple of ricks as well. But even him, like with the goal, we go back to Arley Dean. If he's not called for it, Arley Dean shouldn't be going back, or he should be coming out and just clearing everything, cleaning everything out. You know, it's just it just seems a lack of oh, what am I? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's like drive and desire to walk right away through the club. And it, it, it's having a knock-on effect all the way through. And really, they're lucky that the support's not in the ground. You know? And they, they're getting off lightly at the minute, even though they, they, they're getting a bit on social media, but they are getting away lightly. Um, they, the one they, thing, 
I was going to say, the one thing I've said over the past couple of weeks is, obviously, Cal <laughs> likes to remind me every every day, it's obviously a results-driven business. But for me, yeah. I can't look beyond the squad of players and, and obviously, you know, obviously the, the boardroom and, and the powers that yeah. be, it's it's rotten to the core in there. But, you know, your likes of Harley D, you know, he's played under five different managers now, I think, for the club. And, and we've had the same results from him time and time again. And you just think, how long are these players going to be able to get away with with coming out and doing an interview every now and then saying, oh, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror. But nothing really changes. And you just think no. that they've got away with it for too long now. It needs it needs the club to stay up. And it needs a clear out, basically. It needs, it needs to start again. I mean, you look at... I know I said on there, give me the job and all that sort of stuff, but... Who's at Eddie Howe at the moment? End of the season, get him in. You know, I'd go with someone like that. Um, what he did over with Bournemouth over the years with not fortunes, amounts of money with, a, with Bournemouth little club, really, in the grand scheme of things. Someone well, yeah, like you ever really come into the money once they got to the Premier League, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy's a, a good manager. You know, it's someone that the that the club and I think the fans would take to, you know, and he would get the right sort of fit of player in. If you if you look at the players that they had their back four, that's why that, that's why they were so successful. With well, their back five, I'd, I'd say they were the goalkeeper. Um and what they did off the ball, let alone go and score because they had good strikers. But if you're good without the ball, more often than not you'll get results. And you know, when you got the ball, just go and play. But when you haven't got it, you've got to be boring, rigid and organised. And and they need to be doing that every week, every day on the training pitch. Day in, day out. But no, we ain't going home at half past 12. We ain't going to play golf. We'll stay here until four o'clock. Every day. And then you get them and go, oh, we're tired. And then, you know what? I think there's other people more tired than what you are. You know what I mean? You just got to, they, they just need work, constantly work. Uh, to try and start this year, but it, it probably you probably find looking at that what they got a squad of twenty. I'd say probably a bit more. You probably need to get rid of fifteen of them. Do you, do you not think maybe? Easy. I mean, I, I mean, obviously talking about someone like Eddie Howe. I mean, he's a phenomenal coach at this level, and uh, yeah. I think I think he's got higher aspirations than us at the moment, struggling in the second bottom. But like, you know, I think. Do you think I, I'm starting to get around to this, the thought process of we need to go down now to have that clear out, that reset, if we can survive financially and then go again? What do you think? Uh, but the thing is, though, you don't want uh, you, you can't say it, don't they? But you don't want something like a Bolton or a Sunderland, and you yeah. just don't, they just don't seem to come back um, because uh, you can't see going down and then if it don't start particularly well they'll be getting what eight nine thousand through the through the door you know um i think it needs to stay up and, and have a clear out if they can um get the right man right people in get people in between the management and the board you know that knows what it means to everyone the club the supporters what sort of brand of player they need you know, it's, it's, that's, you haven't got to have the best footballers. Oh, you, you, you need to, you need to have good man management, good organisation. All this people are upon arc on about philosophy. Football ain't changed for 150 years. It's, the pitch is green. It's got white lines, two goals, nets, and 22 players. All this philosophy rubbish. We got oh yeah, we roll it out from the back. Yeah, but then if you can't go nowhere, you boot it long like a goalkeeper does. You just need to, you just need to have. 50% ability, 50% dressing room. And, you know, if you've got the right fit of players, you haven't got to be the best in the division. Oh, I'll let Kieran ask, like, I think, obviously, we want to know your views on the manager. and like, would, like, Do you think he can get us out of this hole? Or? Well, uh, when, when you see his reaction sometimes on the bench and what's he like in the dressing room, for me, he don't look like that he would could, could motivate you to want to go and run another 20, 30%. You know, he's, I just think it's, it's, it's having a knock-on effect from them to him to through the team. And I personally, 
at this time, I think he should go with the run he's been on. And it needs someone in that could organise him into a way of keeping him in the division. Um, don't get me wrong, you don't want managers, you don't want to see people get the sack, but the results just ain't been good enough. Uh, when was the last time they won at home? You know, this, this is this is like I say, this is not Wickham Wanderers, this is Birmingham City. You know, the Huddersfield game was the last home game we won. What was that? Early October. Yeah, was that yeah. two thousand and two? You know, it's just it, it, it needs a change. It needs it needs a per, it needs a personnel change and a, and a, when when they can a squad change massively. Um, massive overhaul. And like I say, you haven't got to have the best players. Get get a good solid spine through the team, and go and get it going. The loan market, you know, you, you, you probably Man United, Chelsea, and Liverpool have got probably 23, 24 year olds that are nowhere near their first team, but are going to be good enough to play championship level. Go go and play them. You know, that's where you go and nick your Dominguez's and your Stan Azaridis and your Brian Hughes for your bit of flair. Yeah, and the rest you just have us dogs that stick their head in and let them get all the plaudits. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Well, I think if we want to get out of this division, well, obviously we're going the other way at the moment. But you know, if we wanted to go the other way, we, we need solid championship players, like you say. Yeah. You know, you, you then fill you fill it with a couple of loan players, like I think Swansea have been doing. You know, they they got that Morgan yeah. Gibbs White in earlier this season. I know he's gone back, but they always seem to go out and find another. I think. They, they pulled in another good loanie, didn't they? So, you know, they're right up there. And Brentford obviously got a completely different model to us in terms of recruitment. Yeah. Their recruitment's fantastic. Yeah. Just well, if, you, if, you, if you look at, um, if you going into taking a 22, say 20, 22 year old from Man United, you're probably going to get him for free anyway. You're going to, you say, like, we'll play him every week. You know, get someone that's going to get the crowd up and excited. But then you've got to have that solid base foundation. And you've got to stick to it. And you've got to keep working on it day in, day out. And I know people not just watching a video on the training ground. You know, you've got to keep best attack against your defenders who are going to play the weekend. Wave after wave after wave. All right, they change their formation. What are we going to do? Yeah, edit out. You're going to add 15 balls. You're going to blank blocks. Make the ball hit you in the face in the training ground. I mean, I remember five sides we used to play. We used to throw ourselves in front of the ball. We didn't want to lose a five side. I can't see any of that team doing things like that. Yeah, I mean, I used to fly around in training. Not, I mean, I did used to used to fly into tackles, but I'll be blocking, sticking my head in because I don't want you to win. Not even in training, I don't want you to win at cards when we go on the bus. You know what I mean? It's just it's different mentality of players. I think it's just I think football's become soft yeah. in a sad way. You know, it's just. It, it, it's frustrating to watch and that's at all levels like Premiership I, I, I don't even I, I turn it off you know VAR and all that it's just it's just becoming it's, it's becoming a non-contact soft sport which it ain't I mean I, I see a, a clip on Twitter um, Man United leads and Gordon Strachan got booted to buggery, all he did was kept rolling over, got the free kick, put his hand on play. Not, not a word said. But like now you'd be like rolling down, down the Tilton Road, wouldn't you? All the way to the bottom and back up. You know, it's just, it's become, to be honest, it's become a bit of a fanny's game, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I'm struggling to watch the Premier at the moment. Like they know how to win tackles, don't they? Like, and win fouls. They, uh, they, yeah. just, they, as soon as they get briefed on and they've, they've got the, the ball the other side of the, you know, Oh, it was like Tammy, 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 right. Tammy Abraham last night. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he conned himself. Penalty, he? Yeah, and don't got himself done. Yeah, he you did. Know? Just stand yeah. your feet and score. Yeah, exactly. Stand your feet and yeah. score. He's a good striker. You know, it's just yeah. the game's infuriating at the moment, and it, it's changing for the worst, really. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, we did ask for for questions in on on Twitter. We've we've covered pretty much all of them. I mean, one message we did get sent said, can you please ask Martin why his trains are always late? <laughs> <laughs> Just like the tag holes, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously we've covered everything else, really. You know, the the, the, the current squad and, and the, yeah. 
the feel around the place was what people really wanted one. to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it is frustrating. It's got to be for you guys that, I mean, you, you go there, well, when you can go there week in, week out, it's... I mean, I, I watch it from afar now and I, it still infuriates me. I mean, look, I'm rubbing my hands together because it's just annoying me. You know, it's, it, the place just deserves, even when we were there, you'd say it just, just deserves better. You know, and I think it was pretty well run when we were there when the Three Stooges were up top. Um, but since they've gone, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just, not, it's just not good. It needs to change. Look at West Ham now, eh? The West Ham fans wanted them out a year ago and sixth in the table yeah. now. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're doing sort of a good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Through pretty too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then we just need to get back on track with someone in that un- really understands the division, you know, and a proven proven manager that can get the right fit of players in. I always said for this level, uh, and he's not everyone's cup of tea, and he wasn't my cup of tea to play, but Neil Warnock's success rate of getting you out, of getting an organised side, a team that wants to play, who are going to be horrible as well. Someone like him. Mm. You know, and all. Uh, if you're not doing too bad a job at Middlesbrough, that's a bit of a rebuild, rebuilding job as well. He's done you well know. what he's got, isn't he? And, and yeah, yeah, I'd have taken Neil Warnock at the start. I would have. But then he lets them two boys go to us. Why? Yeah. You know, we should be going for steps up. I just think that's plateauing. You know, you need, you need. They need better players at the club, basically, in all areas, don't they? Yeah. Well, um, definitely. Yeah. You know, what you say obviously people say they're they're free transfers for a reason. I don't know we've we've found the odd player that that looks quite handful. You know, Sanchez, for example, when he's on it, he's on yeah. it. But you know, yeah. you look at the logs. So like you say, the, the two lads from from Middlesbrough, Clayton, especially, he's he's got he's past it, isn't he? He's, you know, his his legs have gone. He's yeah. Well, it's I mean, they they they've left, they've left Middlesbrough for a reason. I know. For whatever that is, they've not renewed their contracts or their contracts are coming to the end. Or, but if they were if they were going to be part of a successful Middlesbrough team, Neil Warner would have kept them. You know, and this is Birmingham City. I know Karanka knows them, but this is Birmingham City. This ain't this ain't a little football club. It needs better people at the football club. Yeah. Far far better. It deserves better. You know, um, but who that will be, who you knows? But you probably end up. He'll keep them for another year <laughs> with his football club, won't it? Or he'll, he'll, or the owner will come down and run it himself. Get There's involved. Probably more more chance of that, I think. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll be on a training ground taking training next time, next week. I'm still expecting to see him announced as one of the substitutes for the rest of this season. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's probably he's probably got himself on the bookie somewhere. That he's going to get a run out. <laughs> It's worrying. It's worrying. What is? I mean, obviously, we've took up enough of your time anyway, so we'll wrap that up there. But thanks again no for, worries, for coming on to the show. It's been no, brilliant to speak thanks to Thanks for you. having me. I hope I've, um, well, been as honest as I could. So, you know. Oh, I've, I think we've we've given the, the people what they wanted to hear. And so, definitely. No worries, gents. <laughs> thanks again for your time, right. mate. No worries. Take it easy. Cheers, Cheers mate. Thanks, mate. Turn them See you later, bye. Cheers, bye. Well, that's Martin Granger there. Um, that's all we've got time for on this show. Um, I can't get myself off now. I've come back and said we've just had that idiot on here. <laughs> How'd you get it off? How'd I turn it off? I said, I'm like, no good with this, but I'll get it off. <laughs> Fresh leaves right, in I'm the top t- left. <laughs> I ain't got leave. I'll just. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Done. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> And we sit and laugh. Elliot joined pre pre recording last week, and he couldn't figure it out. So, <laughs> That's true. but yeah, we'll wrap that up there, lads. Great chat with Martin. Um, two times over now. <laughs> but yeah. 
you know, if, you, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, you can subscribe and follow the YouTube channel, BCFC Media. Follow us on the social media channels as well, at BCFC Media. Um, stay tuned. We've got more podcasts and more interviews to come. Until then, thanks for watching.